The third generation Honda Fit is a roomy, unexpectedly fun, subcompact hatchback ripe with value. I suppose Honda could have let the Fit ride a few more years as is, but no, following mid-cycle update, the Fit is even fittier. Like most mid-cycle updates, the Fit wears revised front and rear fascias and a new grille. Here's a side-by-side -side if you're curious. Though the big news is the addition of a Fit Sport trim to the lineup. If you've always wanted a Honda Fit with glossy black wheels, a sweet body kit, and a gentle spray of orange accents inside and out, the Fit Sport is your dream made manifest. Sporty accoutrement aside, the Fit remains an oddly roomy runabout. For example, its interior is larger in nearly every dimension than the similarly sized Toyota Yaris. That roominess is made possible through clever packaging, including a gas tank hidden under the front seats. Honda's cleverness is also expressed in the Fit's so-called magic seat. The magic seat folds flat, which doesn't seem all that magical, but the seat bottoms also flip up to carry tall items, and if you have particularly long items, the front seat can flip down. Looks like it might be time for another trip to Irene's Hat Rack over in the Hat Rack District. All told, you've got a substantial 16.6 .6 cubic feet behind the second row seats and 52.7 cubic feet of space behind the front seats. Add wide opening doors and a low load height and the result is an exceptionally versatile cargo hauler. The same applies when hauling people. Front seat headroom is excellent, rear seat headroom is just a bit less excellent, and the rear seat backs offer a two position recline function. What's more impressive is leg room. A traditional pain point in subcompacts, the Fit's legroom utterly trounces competitors like the Chevy Sonic and Kia Rio. You know the legroom is impressive when I dredge up words like trounce to describe it. Tempering that dimensional love is the driving position. With the seat adjusted so my legs are comfortable, the steering wheel is too far away. So I can either drive with cramped legs or imitation G.I. Joe arms. Oh, I can't articulate. What's that? I also wish sliding sun visors weren't reserved for higher trims and the armrests were usable without throwing out my back, but otherwise, complaints are few. The audio system is once again blessed with a volume knob. The climate controls are dead simple to reach and operate. There's an abundance of cup holders and storage spots. Soft materials appear just enough to class up the joint, and the front bucket seats are comfortable with primo lateral support. A good thing since the Fit steers with precision and corners unusually well for an entry-level car. But I'm guessing you don't care about ultimate road holding. I'm guessing you care about parkability and lens flare. You're welcome on the second. On that score, the Fit is a winner thanks to subcompact dimensions, a standard multi-angle backup camera, and exceptional visibility provided by huge windows. When you're not parking, the Honda Fit delights with nice brake feel, a compliant ride, and a decently hushed interior. You know, considering the price tag. Moving the Honda Fit is a 1.5-liter direct-injection four-cylinder engine paired with a standard six-speed manual or an $800 continuously variable transmission that bests the manual when it comes to fuel economy, but not driving fun. Especially since CVT models lose two horsepower and one pound-foot of torque versus manual-equipped cars. In this stratum, every horse counts. 130-ish horsepower may not sound like a lot, but it's actually pretty good for the category, and it's more than enough power for zipping around town or merging with freeway traffic without shame. I will bring my own shame, thank you very much. Slotting just above $17,000, including destination, a base fit LX trim comes with automatic headlights, cruise control, air conditioning, power windows and door locks, a tilting telescoping steering wheel with audio controls, Bluetooth, six airbags, and a 160-watt audio system with USB and auxiliary inputs. For more fit goodness, higher trims offer 16-inch alloys, a moonroof, push-button start and keyless entry that automatically locks the car when you walk away, an upgraded six-speaker audio system, an extra USB port, 
Honda's Lane Watch blind spot camera, and a high res 7 inch touchscreen, replacing the base 5 inch unit and offering Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. In a boon for distracted drivers, the Fit can now be equipped with Honda's awesome Honda Sensing Driver Assistance Package. This $1,000 package, which comes standard on EX and EXL trims, bundles potentially life saving technologies, including lane departure warning, lane keeping assist, dynamic cruise control, and forward collision alert. I've said it before, if you avoid sideswiping just one lowered BMW filled with MMA fanatics, Honda Sensing has basically paid for itself. Live large, and the price tag for an EXL trim with heated leather seats and embedded navigation tops out at around $22,500. Hatchback competitors like the Nissan Versa Note, Chevy Sonic, Kia Rio, and Toyota Yaris each undercut the Fit's base price, some by more than $1,000, but that price advantage is tempered by the Fit's exceptionally strong resale values and long standard feature list. In some ways, the real competition might be Honda's own Civic. Given the price overlap, it might make more sense to skip a fancy Fit and choose a bigger, faster, and more efficient, albeit less dazzlingly equipped Civic instead. Nonetheless, in its class, the Honda Fit is roomy, refined, and cleverly designed, and it also delivers excellent value, both in terms of purchase price and resale values. Add a little mid-cycle love, and the Fit is still the subcompact to beat. Uh, sorry, Metro.